Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to briefly discuss prefabs, just what they are and how they work. So in time-lapse mode I constructed this little chair object, it's just made out of different sized cubes and they're all parented to one empty game object named chair, so I can easily move them about. Now set it aside that I'm satisfied with my chair, and so I use this object everywhere in my game. Sometime later perhaps I suddenly decide that I want all of the chairs to have a cushion on them, I'd now have to search for all of the chairs scattered around the world and individually add the cushions to them, which would be a bit of an effort. This is the main problem that prefabs address. A prefab is essentially the master version of an object, so if I take one of the chairs and drag it into the project window, we've successfully created a chair prefab. This master chair is now saved in our project, so we could safely delete all the chairs from the scene. If we need a chair somewhere in the world now, we just drag and drop from our prefab. So having repopulated the world with instances of the chair prefab, let's look at how easy it would be to add a cushion to all of them now. So I'll just quickly fashion some sort of cushion out of a squashed sphere. And uh, just have to parent this cushion object to the chair so that it belongs to it. And then if I select the chair object, we can go up to the top of the inspector and apply the change to the prefab. And behold, all of the chairs now have cushions on them. You probably noticed that next to the apply button there's also a revert button, so if we make some change to one chair that we don't particularly like, we can revert the object back to the state of the prefab. So we've seen that we can manually drag a prefab into the scene, but what's also very useful is being able to spawn a prefab into the game world from a script while the game is running, so Let's look at how to do that. I'll just delete all of the chairs that I have in my scene, and let's create a new c -sharp script, called something like Furniture Spawner. And I'll create an empty game object over here, called Furniture, and can just attach the Furniture Spawner script to that. Let's open the script up, and let's begin by getting a reference to the chair prefab, so we can say public, game object chair prefab and then if we go into unity that should pop up over here and we can just drag our chair prefab into that slot. So let's say we want to spawn a chair in at a random position whenever the player presses the spacebar. So inside of the update method let's just say if input.getKeyDown keycode.space then we can choose a random position, so vector 3 random spawn position is equal to a new vector 3. On the x-axis we can use random.range between say negative 10 and positive 10, and then for the z-axis just the same story. And then Maybe we can have a random rotation around the y-axis as well. So let's just say vector3 random spawn rotation is equal to vector3.up multiplied by random.range somewhere between 0 and 360. All right, so now to actually spawn the prefab, we make use of Unity's instantiate method. This takes in our chair prefab object and we can also supply a vector3 for the position and a quaternion for the rotation. So we've got our random spawn position, and then we just need to convert the random spawn rotation vector into a quaternion. And the quaternion struct has got a method for doing this, it's called Euler. So we just pass our random spawn rotation into there. Very nice, let's save, go into Unity, and press play. So if we just press the spacebar now, a chair has peered off over there, and we can press it a couple more times. Of course we're not checking to make sure that they can't intersect with one another, so that's a bit ugly, but um, it's definitely working, which is nice. Now it's often the case that we want to get a reference to the thing that we've just instantiated, so if we take a look, we can see that the instantiate method returns an object. Now because we're passing in our chair prefab, which is a game object, 
we will be able to convert the object that it returns back into a game object. So if we write game object new chair is equal to this object, that won't work straight away. If we save and go into Unity, you'll see it kicks up a fuss about it not being able to implicitly convert between object and game object. However, it does point out that an explicit conversion exists, and it asks us if we're missing a cast, which is exactly what we're missing. We need to cast object to a game object. Now, if you're not familiar with casting, it's fairly simple. We just open up parentheses and we write the type that we want to cast to. So in this case, we're casting to a type of game object, and then we close our parentheses. So this is our source type, the object, and we're telling it to cast it to our target type, the game object. All right, so now if we save, running this won't do anything different, but we can verify that it's still working. And uh, just to do something with our reference now, we could maybe make it parent the chairs that it instantiates to the furniture object, just to make the hierarchy nice and tidy. So we could say, new chair dot transform dot parent is equal to the furniture transform. Now if we go into Unity and run this, if we press spacebar a couple of times, you'll see that all of these are being parented to the furniture object. Very nice. All right, so that was a brief look at prefabs and instantiation. Until next time, cheers.